Right, and welcome to Cosmopolitans with Lauren. We are live at the Rockstar Studios here at Village Connection Network in Long Island's Little Big Apple, Huntington. And Lauren has a very special guest tonight, the regional director of Guardian Angels in Baltimore, Strider, Mr. Marcus Dent is here, and um, we're really happy to have him. And uh, Take it away, uh, Alabama lady. Thank you, guys. Yes, I'm still in New York because I love New York. I know I've been bitching about it, but I really like it a lot. And during my ventures here, I've been able to meet a lot of great people. And one of them is Marcus. And we got to talking, and he is, tell us again, um, your official title. I am the regional director for the Guardian Angels in Baltimore. In Baltimore. And you started the... You started, well, let's start out, because I actually have some people in Alabama that didn't know what Guardian Angels was. So I'm going to let you describe what, you, what it is to you, because I, I, there's books and books and books, but <laughs> I want you to explain what you see it as. The Guardian Angels is a volunteer crime watch group that started in New York City, right here in New York. So we'll give you guys a shout out. You did this. Um, in 1979 by a man named Curtis Lewa. Mm -hmm. And in 1979... Uh, that was when the crime and the politicians and everything was pretty much at, a, at an all-time low here in New York. And Curtis Sliwa at that time was a McDonald's store manager. Mm -hmm. And what he did was realize that, hey, wait a minute, we have issues here because everybody's running in McDonald's after they're being mugged and we got fights, we got all this hell going on. And what Curtis ended up doing was taking a team of his McDonald's workers down into the subways. And of course, there was a certain platform where they had all this hell and havoc going on. And Curtis and his guys would go down there and they would monitor that particular platform of, of the subway. And if something happened where somebody was getting mugged or abused or whatever, they would literally step in and take over. And as they did this, they did this consistently. They went out every day. Um, and what happened was the guardian angels became 
well, the, that platform became so popular and so busy because they knew, you know, I'm going to go down to the subway and this guy is not going to let anything happen to us while we're down there. So I'm going down there. And that's what Curtis did. They did it consistently. And uh, then they took their patrols up into the city and started doing the neighborhoods and the streets. And before you know it, they went from, it was first called the um, Magnificent 13 because they have 13 guys. Oh, wow. And more people started joining. And they realized we have to have a visual presence. And that's when the Alliance of Guardian Angels were born. And we are now a worldwide organization with over 160 chapters and maybe 13 or 17 14 countries. Country. Yeah. 14 countries. And that's, that's, that's this yeah, is and all that's, of them. that's all, yeah, but, all but we're people. all over the place. We're <laughs> Japan and South Africa and, and in England and, and of course just about all over the states. And in, in asking that, and we'll talk about Baltimore in a moment, but how do you recruit? Because you know, there's a lot of people that like to be security guards just because they have you know low self-esteem or they want to you know <laughs> have imposed. They're like you know I'm better. I can arrest you. How do you kind of mediate who's going to come in and who can't come in? And do you draw a line that says? Oh, know, definitely. You, know, you have to draw a line. You think about it. the guardian angels have been around for it'll be 40 years in August in February. 40 years for the guardian angels in February, and all the things that we do right, we can't afford to do one thing wrong. So we do have a venting process where we do our background checks. We, uh, and you never stop training, you never stop learning. And if you joined the Guardian Angels, you would have a team of Guardian Angels around you and they would watch pretty much how you are. And of course we'd have your references and your background check and all that, but we still have to see what kind of personality you have. And, and if you don't fit, you're not a people person, you have a violent mentality, or you've had some sort of issue with abuse and that kind of thing, you can't come in. But the Guardian Angels is a organization built on second chances. So therefore, we will take people who have had bad criminal records, but it depends on what that was. You, you, know, you can't be a pedophile, you can't be a murder, you know, murderer, you can't be a rapist, um, but at the same time, if you don't want to be judged for what it is you've done in the past, then don't do it in the future. So we're pretty careful and cautious about who it is we bring in. No, no ifs, ands, buts about it. So in doing that, I would ask all over the world, um, how, like I, there's no guardian angels, I don't think, in, in Alabama. I know y'all have started something in Florida, <laughs> so, but yeah. I haven't seen them. But, you know, so do you put out, is it people that are having <clears throat> to seek you out to be a guardian angel or there is some kind of, are you on social media to say we're, you know, testing out some special No, people? you know what, the best thing about the guardian angel, what I like, and, and like I said, all what I'm telling you is based on my perspective of being, I've been a guardian angel since I was pretty much 17, I joined 17 years old, I'm old now, but I've joined <laughs> a long time ago. But what I like about the guardian angels is in order to be a guardian angel or to have guardian angels in your community, in your neighborhood, you have to want them there. So we wait till somebody contacts us and says, hey, I want to join the Guardian Angels. Now, we do have things where we say, come join us. We have promotions, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But when, let's say if somebody from Alabama called and said, hey, we want to start a Guardian Angel chapter, then we would say, okay, we, we'd talk to you for a while. We'd have to get your community involved, your local police department, and that kind of thing. Stealing all my notes. Okay, go uh, ahead. <laughs> well, I mean, this is what I did. <laughs> but, but, I mean, but we, we pretty much go into a community and it's one thing to say, hey, you know, you'll call me and say, hey, I want Guardian Angels in Alabama. You know, and I'll come down, it's just me and you talking, you know. Then when I get there, everybody's pissed off because they don't want the Guardian Angels in Alabama. Right. So we make sure that whatever community we're invited into, the whole community is on the same page. Now, there have been people that say, well, you know, the police department's not happy. Well, that's okay, mm -hmm. because we are a volunteer organization. We're a community organization, so therefore we don't need their permission to come in. But we, we will we take like it. it, we'll take it, mm -hmm. but you're not gonna stop us. And if the community outweighs the politicians and the police, then that's what it is. It's a community organization. So that's how it works. And that is the best way because, you know, you're not gonna eat anything unless you want it. You know, so you have to want it. Well, you, so are you saying that there is backlash? I can't imagine, but, uh, y'all, before I get on, these are his, I, I can't even read all the recommendations and who these are from. I might throw out one or two, but um, you're telling me that you have backlash oh, uh, coming in? We have backlash, and, and now keep in mind, a lot of the backlash that we have is when we go into a community that's brand new. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the first thing you say, okay, Alabama, you'll go to Alabama, so oh, we're going to have the guardian angels here. And everybody's like, oh my God, who the hell are the guardian angels? 
And then you got the police department saying, we don't need guardian angels here. We're doing our job. Everything's fine here. We don't have a problem. You know, then you have the I community guess. You have the community association says, no, we can't bring the guardian angels in because it's going to make us look like we got problems here. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's true. That's it's a big point. deal. Yeah. So what I try to do is go into that community. I try to set up meetings prior before me even getting, to the, getting into your state. And I meet with these people. And a lot of times, once they meet with us and realize, holy smokes, these are not... The, 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 the fear mongers that I've always been afraid right, of. Because we, vi it's, we it's, visualize it on TV. You, yeah, you visualize and you, and you have the stereotypes and all that. And then they sit down and talk with us and they say, wow, this, this is not at all what we expected. And you got to keep in mind, a lot of that comes from fear of the unknown. You know, you're afraid of ghosts. You ever seen one? Well, no, but I'm afraid of them. Okay, well, you've ever seen one, it's not it's a great big deal. But a lot of times, once you introduce somebody to something, then it takes away that anxiety, that fear, that the confusion, and you get the facts. Now, all of a sudden, everybody wants to jump on on a page, and everybody w and build the partnerships and relationships that make the guardian angels work. And we've done this since 1979. We've done it all over the world, and and it, this is this is what we do. We understand that me coming to Alabama may be an issue with some of the people in Alabama, especially Alabama, because they're so traditional. You know, we some know parts, so. some <laughs> parts, some parts, exactly. But I do know that, OK, here, let's sit down and we'll have we'll have a community town meeting that the police and everybody will show up. And once you do that and you introduce yourself, you answer the questions and they realize, wow, it's not that big of a deal anymore. OK, what can we do? And that's how it works. And, and that's from the smallest little city, community, neighborhood, homeowner association, all the way to a bigger state like Texas. Okay, so say you did come to Alabama and you give the talk. Um, are you going to leave some of your men down from different places to train uh, those that want to be volunteers? Absolutely, because it's one thing to want to be a guardian angel. It's another thing to be a guardian angel. And one of the things that we have to make sure that we do correctly is to train you the proper procedures and policies and how to be a guardian angel. It's a people person organization. It's not one of these things where people run around in the 79 or whatever, 1979, where they just slam people down because it was a rougher time back then. You know, we've had 40 years to evolve and for everybody to say, hey, this is a great community group. You know, this is what we want to do. So we want to make sure that when we come down there, you know, we teach you how to patrol. We teach you how to be a community guardian angel watch group. We teach you how to basically walk and talk and act like a guardian angel. You know, we train. We never stop training. And we train on everything from conflict resolution to self-defense to first aid and CPR. And even, even how to hold a community meeting, how to talk to your neighbor, and how to build relationships. That's a big deal. Communication is key to everything. In saying this, that's to me. If you're saying I, I'm leaving two men down here to train the mm -hmm. other guys, that's a financial hit. Who supports financially y'all flying from place to place? And that, apparently, I hit a nerve because you. <laughs> <laughs> but Be it's a financial. That's a huge financial thing. So do, <sighs> it, do you get sponsored? I mean, we. You know what? I've been doing this most of my life. I've we've we've restarted the Baltimore chapter in 2006. This Saturday, we're actually celebrating our 12th year anniversary yes. in Baltimore. And the sad thing is, no, we don't have uh, sponsors that say, hey, we're going to help support your organization. And, and a lot of that has to do with, with in Baltimore, I'm going to blame myself. I'm not going to blame the organization as a whole. But as volunteers who want to better uh, empower their communities, you do what it is you need to do. So a lot of the stuff that, you know, we'll, we'll raise the money to do what it is we got to do. And sometimes, you know, we'll reach out to different groups and say, hey, you know, we're gonna, we need a donation to help with this. And it's great if the people that want us in Alabama say, hey, we're going we're gonna to bring you up for the weekend and we're going to put you up, we're going to do this. Oh, yeah. But a lot of times, you know, you have to find a way to make do. And, and we do it because this is the mission, this is who we are, and this is what we want to do. And uh, believe me, you don't want to know the amount of money I've spent on a guardian I've, angel. And, but a lot of stuff that we do, the guardian angels will pay for themselves. And if you have a bunch of money out there and you want to support a great organization, give me a call, please, because we can use the money. Give you all the information too. Oh yeah, yeah, we can use the money definitely. But but it's a community organization, and the best thing about it is it's it's literally run by the community. And one of the things I like about the Alliance of Guardian Angels, it's not like, uh, and I'm not even going to use another nonprofit name because it's, I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But one of the things about the Guardian Angels, if I go back to Baltimore, somebody says, hey, you know what, I'm going to give you. 
50 grand to help run your organization. That money goes 100% to the Guardian Angels in Baltimore. It does. I don't have to send it to the founders or the board of directors, and there's not 50,000 pieces split off of it. You know, that money literally goes to the Guardian Angel chapters. Now, if you send it to New York and say, hey, this is for the Alliance of Guardian Angels, then that money will go to the Guardian Angels. So there's no, no big turnover that they have to pay or, you know, all this kind of thing. It's, it's a great organization, but it's to serve the community. Okay. In saying that, um, you were talking about fear of the unknown. Do you, is there any kind of instances where the guardian angels have had to take someone down, or it's turned into some, you know, situation that somebody gets shot or knifed or beat up, killed, or anything like that? And that could be something because I've never heard of it. I didn't find any. We've had on it. we've had six guardian angels die within forty years of the history of the guardian angels. Six. And not one of them has happened after 1985. And that's because we're better trained, we're better communicated, we're better known. Mm -hmm. um, everything about us has pretty much gotten better. And some of those people, and I'm not going to go into the details because one, I don't know them all exactly. And, uh, and two, I, I don't want yeah, but, to start it up and but, just and, but we've also had guardian angels killed by cops. We've had guardian angels killed by gang members. Um, oh, wow. But a lot of, and, and when I say killed, I mean these guys were targeted because they were guardian angels. And we've had six deaths. So, yeah, something happens all the time. And what I like, and, I, and I'll speak because there's so many chapters around the world where these things happen. But, you know, we haven't had the Guardian Angel suit. Or we don't go out and just say, okay, we're going to attack. But the best thing about the Guardian Angels is that you can literally stop an incident with just sheer presence. Yeah, because I will say when I walked down, and I know Marcus said I walked in the lobby and he was standing there was like, well, you know, it was kind of what we thought was like some kind of young kid that was kind of maybe running some drugs. We're just saying, we don't know who. But, oh, he was but nervous, it's, it's there's no his, doubt. He walked yeah. in, he was like standing up, sitting down, standing up, you know. I mean, and <laughs> the whole know. room changes. He didn't know what to yeah. do. The whole room changes. And you know, it is your demeanor. I guess I know you regularly and your demeanor has changed a little bit. You're well, just a and little you know what, and it's weird because it's, 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 it's like a presence thing, but you can have someone join the Guardian Angels. And, and I know this because I've, I've, I train guardian angels. And once they come in, their, their confidence lifts up. They get stronger. They're, they're, um, you know, you have somebody who couldn't speak publicly before. And now they're, now they're leading conversations in rooms or teacher classes. You have someone who was afraid to walk down the street. Now they're confident enough to walk down any single street. They're able to lead patrols. But it's a totally different thing when you put on the guardian angel uniform now, i'm not saying you automatically transform because to put this thing on you, you got to remember training you got it yeah you got to have training but you got to understand also is that you you can basically set yourself up to be a target because not everybody likes the guardian angels you have bad guys out there who will see us and say oh god here we go you don't know what you're going to go into we've walked in the gangs we've walked in the violence the guardian angels is an organization that was built to help protect people who are victimized, brutalized by crime. You know, something bad is happening, which is why the Guardian Angels was formed. It's great. We get to do nice stuff every now and then, and we get to meet people. We get to take pictures, and people give us hugs on the street. That's great. But the, but the main reason of the Guardian Angels is to empower our communities from the bad people that are out there. And I was doing in my re research that you, like, when you can't, your presence is always there, but y'all have, like, a block. Uh, block that's the, you know what I'm talking about, where y'all call each other, each, you know, each neighbor is looking out for the other neighbor, and you have a block leader that has to oh, attend yeah. a meeting. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, and that is actually a, um, a program that we developed in Baltimore called the, uh, the Guardian Angel Community Block Watch Program, and that's brand new, and that is for uh, basically people who want to do something with, to empower their neighborhoods, but they don't actually want to be Guardian Angels. Now, the difference is Guardian Angels go out, and they literally patrol the subways, they patrol the streets. You know, they do their own community policing, you know, as guardian angels. And a block watch is exactly that. We want to go out. We want to watch our community. We want, we want to go plant gardens. We want to do community cleanups. We want to do public safety walks. But we don't want to go patrol the high crime areas. We don't want to put ourselves at risk. So that is a great program that, that we started in Baltimore that's really catching on because you would be surprised how many people said, oh, man, I would love to start a community guardian angel watch. But this one falls directly under the guardian angels, which allows us to train this community block watch group 
and we pull in the police department, the state's attorney's office, the fire department, and everybody with initials or, or agencies that can come in and help empower that one community block watch program. So it's a great program. I'm pretty proud yeah, I was, of it. I was, I was noticing that, the, that you had to have, do you have to have the backing of the police and the whatever, no. but it, it typically no. happens because the community it, is asking for it. And not only that, but I think a lot of times the law enforcement agencies realize that, wait a minute, you know what, these guys are not a threat, mm -hmm. they're not competition, mm -hmm. and they're not doing a bad job. Because there's times where you use guardian angels to help mediate the issues between the community and the police. Everybody knows a lot of times in communities that you don't have the best relationships. And in Baltimore, it was the same thing with the Freddie Gray problems. And we, we've done this. But when you work in partnership to... Uh, to fix a, a, a community problem, and you have those guys to help you, the state's attorney's office, the police department, it, it just works out so much better. And they support us really well, you know, with their, they even help train the guardian agents in Baltimore. We call them and say, hey, we got this thing going on, can you guys, and they're there, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that, uh, I think that all chapters of guardian angels should have decent relationships with their police department, and a lot of them do. But it, it's hand in hand. It just makes everybody's job that much easier. And the main thing is it pulls communities together. And interestingly enough, I found this fascinating, which I've never heard of. You have a junior guardian angels program, <laughs> which I think is great. Because I would say it's being a single mom and having a son that I raised completely by myself. I, I couldn't find a big brother because I was my set the way I was living was not you know that mm -hmm. was not they weren't going to send me anybody to look out for it you know but this allows troubled use or people that are maybe off course or even those that are feel automatically in there to what train as a junior the, ju the junior guardian angels pretty much do the same thing that the guardian angels do except patrol and what you when what that mean by that is that we put them through the self-defense training we put them through um you know how to make friends how to talk to people and, and and you know when we we had the junior angel and we did suspend it basically because of the funding but it's a great program that we're, that we're working on putting back together because you bring kids in and not only do you just it's not one of those things where you just drop them off at the local community club and just let them play pool until mom comes to get them you know no you take them out and you do things with them you introduce them to the people at the mayor's office you take them into the community you help them you let them do community cleanups we've had our junior guardian agents help us with everything from missing persons to community cleanups but you get them involved in giving back and at the same time, what did you just do? Now we're hanging out with the guardian angels. We have our uniforms on. We have our patrol. They, they learn how to post up. They learn how to do patrols. They learn how to do the formations. They learn That's all this. The same. Oh, yeah. And they, and they get this. You know, they, they do bullying, mediation, and all this stuff. And in order for them to stay junior guardian angels, you got to get your grades up. Okay? You got to stop talking bad to mom. You can't hang out on the corner with your local drug dealing friends. But these are all positive things because kids need mentors. They don't need to sit home with video games. They don't need to hang out with little Ray Ray down the block because yes, he's got a big I'm car and he's, he's got a handful of money. Mm -hmm. You know, but if you steer them the right way, you're going to get a positive adult out of them. And then what do you do? You know, we, you know, one of the first times that we showed off the Junior Angels was at the uh, Southern District Police Department. We had the police commissioner there. We had the city council president. It was a big deal. But these are positive kids doing positive things. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a, that, uh, there's another great program. Well, you also have another great program. Um, the Honk Campaign. Oh. I said Honk. I know I'm Southern. The so Honk. I'm honk. honk. Okay. The what honk campaign? Honk. The what? Honk. The Honk Is campaign. The honk? Honk. Honk. H-O-N-K. As in, this guy's a honky. <laughs> no, it's in Honk Your Horn. Okay? I knew yes. the Southern honk Drama going to screw people Well, up. no. <laughs> that, that program was basically put together to help with missing persons. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we did a thing <sighs> years ago. We got into a, a case with Felicia Barnes' disappearance where a uh, well, teenager. You, you have to explain that because we don't know. You, you recognize. Felicia Barnes was a 16-year-old girl who came from North Carolina to visit friends and family in Baltimore, Maryland. Mm -hmm. Okay, she disappeared, and four months later she was found. Her body was found in the Susquehanna River. And the Guardian Angels was deeply involved in that because we, we got personal with the family. And that, that literally was a case that literally almost tore the the Baltimore Guardian Angels apart Why? because because for four months you looked for this teenager I mean we went all the way to North Carolina we dealt with the family every single day we were searching through dumpsters and woods and you name it we did we did everything we could and I lost Guardian Angels because of it because a lot of Guardian Angels felt that the Guardian Angels weren't doing enough we're out every day 
and and some garden angels thought that we were doing too much and it was just heartbreaking and and you know i remember the day felicia barnes was found and i called all the angels and i told them all you know this is how it ends you know everybody just wanted to find this kid so bad and i remember we were all standing at angel headquarters and i don't think any of the angels spoke we were just standing just looking at each other and it was horrible it was a horrible sick feeling and i remember i mean i've been an angel most of my life and i remember saying dude i can't do this anymore yeah. this this sucks because we were we were literally fighting with each other it was horrible you know and um fighting with each other because of the stress and the strain it, and yeah it's a lot fun. you know i had you know the guardian angels we have our own certain procedures i had angels you know going into police crime scenes and driving down one-way streets oh. and but because you want to find this kid mm -hmm. you know but when it all happened it all came down i remember the phone call came from the family and you know we apologized i said look i'm so sorry for your loss and they said look you need to be here get to the house and I'm like, well, what's the matter? And they said, we're grieving, and we, we need you to agree with us. And to this day, we are still in communication with the Barnes family. They're a great family, and we want to thank them for everything. And, and I remember we went over there, and, and it gave us time to kind of heal. And that literally saved us, really, because I was like, you know what? We, this is yeah, horrible. Just we were all just miserable. Mm -hmm. you know. But the, the Hong campaign was a campaign, and it started with uh, – with uh, one of my one of my guardian angels, uh, 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 Victoria Peace Kent. Yeah, well, no, peas and pods of our partnership. But one of our guardian angels, Crush Kent, would had a, um, a group of hers where they would go out and they would honk. They would have this honk for the missing, you know, for for women who were basically abused and children um, and beaten and disappeared. And she joined the guardian angels, and we started that program here, honk for the missing. And what we would do was take the missing persons poster. We go out onto a, a busy intersection where the crime was or where that person was last seen and we'd encourage the drivers to honk their horns and we did this a couple of times it worked really well you know cars are coming we got the support the media shows up the police shows up and in the neighborhood say, with you with honking how is that being supportive are you handing out flyers handing out flyers we okay. have the picture and everybody's pulling out what's going on here because there's people that, what the hell are you guys doing mm -hmm. you know and then we tell them but it raises awareness for that missing person and now, you know, since we've started that, you know, we have a honk for the missing person one day a year, you know, that all the guardian angels around the world participate in on the same day, the same time, and they'll pick a missing person there, and we all do this honk campaign, and it is that, a great... For that one person, for, one no, person no, Baltimore, for, one person for, yeah, China. Yeah, you, you pick somebody in your local area, and this is the honk for the missing thing, and I think now we're up, our next year will be our seventh, and that is a great campaign. And, uh, but... One we learned from the Felicia Barnes disappearance is that 2,300 people go missing every single day. Every 40 seconds, a child goes missing. Every 40 seconds. You do the math on that. Just do the math. He's already done the math. And it's amazing. That. Explain that. It's uh, amazing. You were and us, uh, tell me about the thing you now, now, so what we, yeah, and we, we, we have, it's, uh, it's, it's mind boggling, but you never know when they're going to miss. And, and the thing is, the family never stops looking for them. So, through that, all these years of doing the Honk for the Missing campaign and looking for missing persons, you know, we've developed such um, partnerships with people like Peas in a Pod. Yes, you know, what and is Peas in a Pod? Well, Peas in a Pod is a missing person advocacy group run by Guy Town Borders in Atlanta. Okay. And she got involved with the Guardian Angels. Um, now, she runs Peas in a Pod, but we're kind of partnerships when it comes to missing persons because uh, when something happens, she does the same thing. She'll call me, I'll call her. And we will do whatever we got to do, not just in Atlanta, not just in Baltimore, but basically across the country. And we get with our flyers together. We'll use the guardian angels. We'll use the missing person advocates and all our contacts. And we'll get as much information out there as possible. And we'll do what we can to spread awareness for that missing person. So they are our biggest partners when it comes to missing persons. And, and you know, so thank you, Gaetan. Thank you, Peace. Thank you. And in saying that, because um, I was really close to the Natalie Holloway family. And what I was, when you were saying it, 20, how many? 2,300. All right. What is it, if you've got that many people disappearing, that helps you decide on who you're looking for? If you've got that many kids. Because I agree, well, you know, there's <clears throat> Amber Alerts and everything, but, but there's other kids. But here's the missing. thing. Think about it. 2,300 people go missing every single day. Mm -hmm. How many have you heard about today? That's what I'm saying. I'm you like, don't so how do, how do you choose who y'all are going to We don't find? choose. Okay. They choose us. And what with the guardian angels... What like I said, we don't get involved with anything until we get contacted by the police, a family member, or someone saying, "Hey, we need your help." Because if you go in there and say, "Look, we're going to go, man, we're going to find this," we're gonna, now all of a sudden you've not only come, you've not only forced your way into it, 
but now everybody expects you to have a certain resolve for it. But what happens is they'll contact us and say, hey, you know, my name's Lauren. You know, my friend's missing. This is the information, this, that. And what we'll do from that point, we'll contact Pease. We'll contact the local law enforcement or the, or the detective handling the case. We'll let them know who we are. And then what we'll do is we'll put together, we can put together our own network of people. We can go out and do our searches. We can go out and spend our, send our flyers out. We can start making phone calls. We can do whatever we got to do. And social network is amazing. I was going to say, because I read where you, is, this is the number one request in the Persistence in Baltimore. It, 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 and, 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 but not it's because I'm in Baltimore, but we get the request from everywhere. You know, somebody may call me from Timbuktu and say, hey, my brother's missing. How can you help? And then we have to reach out to a guardian angel chapter in that area and then missing person advocacy groups. And you can do it, though. And then we'll go through that person's social pages and we'll reach out to their friends and their family. And then once we start doing that, people saying, holy smokes, the guardian angels are looking for this person. You know, um, Let's let's send them something. You know, they'll easy to they'll easily call us more than they will the police department, and or we'll get tips. And then all of a sudden, everybody's saying, "Hey, you know what? The guardian angel just posted this this page on on Twitter or on Instagram. Let's 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 forward it." And it's going out there. But the thing is, it's networking. It's all about networking. So it's not specifically us that goes out and helps find. And the majority of missing persons. We can't sure. find. We don't know where they are. Well, they're never reported. You know, and, and well, and I even if they are, I'm wondering how some are more important than the others. No, and a lot of times, and it's not. And we'll see, like we'll see a newsreel that comes over that has a missing person post, and we'll share it because we don't wait for them to say, "Oh, yeah." You know, if it's out there already, it's already out there. So we will share. We may not get involved with boots on the ground because we weren't invited to do so. I mean, hell, if I had the manpower, the money, and the time, I'd be, I'd, I'd never sleep. Mm-hmm. You know, because and the thing is, once you get hooked on these missing people. And even the homicide victims or whatever, you become attached and all of a sudden this is all you do. And unfortunately, I got to work, I got to eat and I got to sleep, you know, but it's it's one of those things that it becomes a passion for you. And there's not just me. There's so many people out here that are doing the same thing that we do. It's, because it's crazy. I, noticed, I was reading, I ha- y'all, sometimes I have to look down because I just can't remember everything. Um, but during the Hawk campaign, you return of two teenagers in Georgia, Florida, and even two endangered runaways in Maryland. Yeah, but the, the endangered runaways are probably the most popular because you know what? They'll go home, they'll go to school during the week, and then all of a sudden they'll say, well, you know what? I want to hang out with my friends on this weekend. I'm just not going to go home. And all of a sudden, mom's waiting for you to come home. It's Friday. Oh my and God. we've... I would kill you, my kids. <laughs> hey, this happens all the time. I mean, and, But you know, and it's funny because after a while, you kind of get the niche of, okay, you, you talk to the parents, you talk to the family, you talk to the friends. Okay, well, what's your daughter like? Or what's your son like? And who are, and these, okay, they'll be back Sunday night. Mm-hmm. Well, how do you know? Because they'll be back Sunday night. Mm-hmm. You know, you're hoping, you're praying, you may be it right. But what happens is a lot of times these kids just, hey, we're going to a party this weekend. You can stay at my house. And what do they do? They just disappear. So now the police are called. You got that out there. The guardian angels are called. You got flyers and posters and stuff going everywhere. Then all of a sudden, what happens? Sunday night, when it's time to go back to school on Monday, your kid walks through the door. And it's sad because that takes um, such energy from things that are really happening. The energy, the resources, and the heartbreak. And, you know, thank goodness none of my kids did that because I kid you not. Um, You know, when you're looking for missing kids, you know, if I could put a chip in my kids, I would. I'm telling you, it is horrible. It's, it's a horrible, sick feeling, and, and it's, it's, it's just one of these things. But, you know, it happens all the time. And, and it's, it's probably one of the, it's, it's probably my biggest fear. It, it, you know, it's, you know there's, no, there's no closure. You know what happens when a missing person family, and they don't, they're not found? The family goes out, and then all of a sudden you got 50 people. That ha- when it happens, they're all out there. They're out there handing out flowers. They're making phone calls. They're walking the street with you. The next day, you got maybe 40. Then the next day, you got 30. Then all of a sudden, a year later, nobody wants to answer your phone calls or talk to you anymore because you know why? Because all you're talking about is the fact that your kid disappeared. There's no body. There's no closure. You don't know what's going on. So now you're isolated. You've lost all your family. You lost your friends because nobody, y'all, here she comes again. She's going to talk about this missing kid. She's going to talk. It's been a year, you know. But this, this, the pain pain never goes away. It never goes away. I watched the television the other day, and I saw where uh, Natalie's father is doing a second show on still looking for what happened to you him. never stop yeah, looking you, know, yeah. you never stop looking and I mean there's there's a there's a case I mean there's a couple of things that we, we we look at and we know okay 
you know, it's not going to happen. I've talked to parents who've called, and you want to be optimistic. You want to help. And I've had a couple of people say to me, well, and I'll say to them, okay, well, what do you think? Well, my daughter's dead. Oh, my God. Well, my son's dead. Well, how do you know? Because if they weren't, I'd have heard from them by now. And, and they've accepted that, okay, I know that my loved one's never coming back again. But doesn't mean I'm going to stop looking. It doesn't mean I'm going to try to see, you know, try not to see what happened here. You know, but I know something bad has happened. But you still got that hole in you that you just can't close. Marcus, can I, can I ask you a question mm -hmm. regarding the missing? And, and I've noticed this, and, and there is a bias in the media. I mean, the media tends to jump all over if it's um, a person from, you know, a lily white person, and, and the African American and Hispanic community goes pretty much unreported and 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 is that is that where uh and my question being is that where most of if if not all of the calls for your help come from is the people who are underserved and 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 quite frankly un unjustly so like a, a, an underserved african-american community where the news media would be like eh, you know the the calls come from everywhere the sad thing about it is that realistically, the minorities do not get a lot of help, a lot of coverage, a lot of service, a lot of support. And that's just the way it is. And we have groups out there that, that I mean, it, it's, it's hard, it's painful. And you I mean, I've literally had mothers come to me. How come they're not looking for my daughter? My, my daughter's not as pretty as that. My daughter's not as, but this is the reality of it. You know, you're not gonna find a lot of, of news coverage for a, a, a missing, uh, a minority child it's just not going to happen and Seriously. and it's it's sad you know but at the same time you look at you know, it's the same thing with the homicide stats now you can go kill somebody in a nice neighborhood where the people have money and they're and they're not minorities and it's going to make the news and the police aren't going to stop looking okay but then you go into an inner city and then all of a sudden it's alcohol or drug related so therefore you get a two-second blurb on the news and then it's gone it's over it's not even you know and, and that's what happens and and yeah, that was a that's a great question, and and it's it's a hard question, and it just sucks. But and, and, and it life's is it's not it's, fair. it's a hard subject to to right. take on because you know it, it but it is what it is. But I you mean, know what? and it's a hard subject to take on because nobody will say it and nobody will talk about it. Of course not, and, because and, no and, one you know, we, we no one except do. Village Connection has yeah. the no. guts to do it. <laughs> you got to do <laughs> it. The, and and you know, it's not Boston. But, thank, but it, and and that's yeah, all right. I, no, I, I, I mean, but a lot of people okay. will not talk about that. They but won't bring it up. It's like the elephant in the room. Like, yeah. come on, let's you know? if we're going to be honest and have a conversation, it's got to be brought out. There. And it's got to be. And the thing is, there are there are like peas and guardian angels. There's a lot of groups out there that are trying to bring this awareness out. And it's us that say, hey, you know what? Let's profile this. Let's make this happen. We don't need anybody's permission to do it. Right. That, that's, that is a great thing that y'all don't have to answer. But yeah. do you have to answer? I mean, if you start a campaign, say, looking for someone that the police don't feel is really inactive or should be investigated, do you have to go tell them, look, this is what we're doing to avoid any controversy? Or is no. it just you wait for them to contact you? No, what I, I always contact them first, no matter what we do, whether it's a missing person or it's a public safety patrol or even if it's a community walk, I always inform law enforcement that we're going to do it. Now, if they say to me, okay, hey, Strider, we don't want you walking through this community right now because we have an investigation going on here, or this, we, will, we will immediately shut that off, mm -hmm. you know, which is one of the reasons why we communicate with them. And we do everything we can not to cross the burn bridges or, or mess up anything that the police department already has going on. Now, if we did something and they said, you know, we, okay, we're going to go look for this missing person, you know, and they said, you know, I mean, why would they tell us no unless there's something that they're doing that we can interfere on the investigation. Mm -hmm. But other than that, they've always said, okay, what is it you need? Mm -hmm. So it's not an issue. But we will not do anything to, to step on the police department's toes when it comes to an investigation. All right. Well, say that someone calls you up and says, my husband, my boyfriend is beating me or... Uh, I'm scared of him. What do y'all do? Can, do you get involved there? Or do you just say, call the police? And well, we always say call the police. You have to call the police. You can't, we're not substitutes for the police department. You know, you can't call the guardian agents and think that, okay, you, well, when it comes to us in law enforcement, because we have no special police. We're just mm -hmm. citizens. We're uniformed. We're better trained, but we're still citizens. Mm -hmm. But we will reach out. And you know what? I was at an airport in, in New Mexico. Walking to the airport, my, this is a true story, okay? And an airport guy came to me. He was 
the luggage guy and he said, can I ask you a question? I said, sure. He says, one of my coworkers is being beat on and basically abused by a, a family member and she won't call the police. And she told me not to say anything. What should I do? I said, call the police. He says, well, why would I do that? She just told me not to. I said, why would she tell you in the first place? I said, she may be afraid to call the police, but she's reaching out to you. She's being beat on. She's being abused at home. And she told you. You know, That's so a good point, people. I've never thought about that, and I've you I've know with when students. people and they say, "Well, we don't say anything because I don't want to get in trouble." Well, then why are you telling me? You know, you're telling me for a reason. But at the same time, you know, you come to me and say, "Hey, Strider, you know, I'm getting beat on at home, and I don't do anything about this." And you you show up dead the next day, and it happens all the time, ladies and gentlemen. It happens all the time. You have to you got to act. And you go to school, and what, what's the first thing they say? Oh, I saw a little bruise on little Bobby here, and I'm going to call somebody. They call somebody. Mm -hmm. They have to. And they say, well, I had to call. I saw the bruise. It's our rules. You know, but the, forget the rules. What are you going to do if, if this kid doesn't come back tomorrow because, you know what, you knew he was getting beat on, and all of a sudden he's dead. Same thing with a woman who's being, or your neighbor upstairs. Oh, look, he's beating her again. You know, there he goes. And then one day he kills her. You could have stopped that with one phone call. Mm -hmm. You could have stopped it. And, you know, we've talked to to families and, and stuff like that. And, you know, hey, what's going on here? You know, we don't come right in and barge into your house and get into your personal business. But if somebody contacts us and says, hey, you need to talk to my boyfriend because he slapped the shit out of me the other day. We got to fix this out. Mm -hmm. You know, then all of a sudden, yeah, we'll, we'll, hey, you know, what's going on? You know, but at the same time, now you let them know, I know. I know what it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, but yeah, you have to you have to do something. But and and a lot of times we'll reach out to the police department and say, hey, we got an issue here. We just got this, and people do that to us all the time. Hey, you know, my son is my. But they, you know, and we will tell them, okay, we'll see what we can do, and we'll reach out to the police department, and let them know. Not that they have to act right away, but they now are aware by. And they'll tell me, okay, Strider, can you talk to them about this, this, and that? And a lot of times that communication where they don't handle it directly, automatically comes into play. Where okay, the trust is built. You know, they know we're talking here. Now you can talk directly to them, and it works out. There's a lot you can do, but if somebody comes to you with something like that, make the phone call yourself. Don't wait for them. If they knew it was best for them, they wouldn't be talking to you. That's true. Well, if, if you're too scared to, I've, yeah, and, I've been and in situations where I've been too scared to do it. But at the, but think about it. I mean, didn't you just wish that there was one time you could just? I mean, you know. Well, eventually I did, but yeah, you, it, you know, it, it takes gets old. When, we'll, we'll talk about it on another show. But I'm going to ask you this, which I think would be very important in what you do. Um, if uh, parents contact you, if their, uh, you know, adolescent son or something is kind of being, what do you get? They're kind of coercing them over to the gangs, and they're trying to get them on the right side. Do do you ever go in as yeah. for a family and say, sit the boy down and say this? Well, is what and what we'll do is I'll say, well, just bring them to Angel Headquarters, and I don't bring them in and sit them down and say, oh, listen here. You get yourself in check, you know. You know, but you you kind of build a, a relationship with the kid. You bring him in, you introduce him to the headquarters, and he sees the other angels and all the cool stuff you got. And a lot of times we'll do that with self defense because, you know, that's that's a cool thing. And we'll come on, I want to show you something, you know. And they'll come up and we'll go over a couple little things with him, and all of a sudden that's really cool. So they're not there because they're being punished for it or this or that, you know. But all of a sudden now you have this kind of communication thing that you're starting to build up. And a lot but of times it works like out. Scared straight. Have you seen Scared Straight? And oh, I've kids, seen Scared Straight. Yeah, and the kid, because I told my son one time, you're going to Scared Straight. That's just because yeah. he was being disrespectful. Yeah. But, I mean, it's not all the time that you're going to get a kid in there that goes, okay. I mean, you, you don't. Do you use more, I would think, with someone that's really looking at getting into a deep game, that maybe you would bring some, maybe three or four of y'all and tell them what would happen. No, and what we do is, and well, you can sit there and preach and put your thumb on somebody, and this is my thinking anyway, and, and you need to, uh, this was going to, you know, and a lot of times they're going to walk out that room and, and it's over. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, you can sit down and say, look, you know, I know who you're hanging out with. I know what it is you're into. Let me show you something. And then you tell them about the history of the people that you've already worked with, why you're a guardian angel. You know, I've, I've had guys that I've take, talked to about guys that aren't even around anymore. You know what? He's dead and gone. And the scariest thing or the, or the saddest thing that I've heard is, well, I don't care. I don't expect to live long anyway. Yeah, I, I, You know, I, I, and you hear that. all. You just say, well, what the hell's the matter with you? You, you know, yeah. you're going to live for 100. This is what you got to do. But at the same time, you let them know that this is a reality. But the main thing that stops this kid is when you say, look, your family loves you. We care about you. 
this is why we're talking. We don't want anything to happen to you. You know, the hardest part is when you tell them, you can't do this, you can't do that, da, 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 or I'm going to do this. No. You know what? We're looking out for you and your future. And a lot of times, why do kids join gangs? They join these gangs because they want to feel like they belong. And a lot of times, they may, these kids may be missing something at home as well. fathers or yeah, yeah, mothers you know? are working all the time. Yeah, and, you know, and that it is, I mean, I've been lucky in my life. I, I've raised by my mother and sisters. And I've always had strong male mentors for some reason that well, came up and looked up. Oh, and I the lucky I'm gonna, one. Well, I'm going to tell you honestly, because I, as a single mom, there was not a lot of, there was not any positive role models uh, for him. And I couldn't, there was nothing I could do. I mean, like, you know, we were one social class and you cannot get it. Another social class, you can't get it. Big brothers, but it's just, it's heart-wrenching when and, you and, really and, try. And, and it really, and it's hard to find something that can fill a void. Yeah, honestly, my thing, I never really needed a man, my father figure in my life. I've always had my, my mother and my <laughs> sister, so I was always okay, mm -hmm. you know. But like I said, I w I've been lucky enough and blessed enough to have these guys come in and say, hey, let me teach you about cars, or hey, let me show you about martial arts, or, or hey, let me teach you how to ride a motor. You know, something. I've always had something. But at the same time, you know, I've, you know, my life has always been one of those two where I've come from one of those past where I didn't want to go to the dark side. I've seen it. I didn't want to go there anymore, you know, and therefore I chose a certain direction to go to because I didn't want, I don't want to live my life in and out of jails. I don't want the drugs and all that scene. No, I know what I want. And that's what you do. And a lot of times that comes from where you came from. Well, in, in doing that, okay, say y'all are out in your groups walking and you see something go down. It's not good. What is, where do you step in? Because uh, I know you can make a citizen's arrest. Do, do you all have a little bit more power? Or do you know your boundaries? Or are the police grateful that that happened? Or all the above. Okay, so All tell the us. above. And the most important thing is you have to be able, there's no cookie cutter situation. So you're not going to say, well, you know what this book says to do. No, you have to take it as it is on that scene. We've had, uh, we've had incidences where there's been fights. We've had incidences where there's been weapons pulled. We've, and whatever it is, you got to remember that you're, going, you're about to answer for what it is you do or what you fail to do. So one of the good things about the Guardian Angels, especially with the uniform and the presence, is on the fights, we walk up on it, and a lot of times people are looking, uh, okay. Um, We're out. And, we, you know, and so we, uh, I mean, we've been here 12 years in, in Baltimore since the restart. We, we haven't had one physical altercation. We stop stuff. But a lot of that doesn't, hadn't take, you know, aggression. But one of the things that we do train on, you go out on that patrol and you're out there with your group of guardian angels. Each guardian angel has a specific job to do. And the situations that you may or may not get into, we've already trained for. We know who's going to make the calls. We know who's watching, which guy that this person is going to watch. We know if something clicks over, what do we need to do as a team to control this situation? And that's... A lot of times the preparedness is and the confidence of it, a lot of people, we don't, we, it, it stops it. Now, we do have the situation occasionally where people are just going to flip off, and you always have the one. Mm -hmm. That doesn't last long because we have different techniques and, and strategies the guardian angels train on all the time for that. We can literally isolate one person out of a group of like five or six really fast. And when you, when that ha without even touching you, mm -hmm. but when that happens, you pretty much know, okay, this is my ass. And okay, I'm done now. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done now. How are you, buddy? <laughs> you know, we were just joking. Yeah. You know. Well, do you, so do you go out every? Well, we know you have to eat, and I know I've got to do my commercial break in about five. I know Stephen's about to pop me because that's the first thing he said to do. I know, and he, he's gone. Um, but like when you go cruise uh, the street, I say cruise, um, maybe patrol, patrol, wrong, patrol, or, wrong okay. terminology. <laughs> cruise. Um, like, is there a way that um, y'all? pick specific areas or yeah. y'all just go to one certain area every single time or no 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 no, no 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 and a lot of times now our guardian angel headquarters is based in a place called moore park mm -hmm. but we pretty much can go anywhere in the state that we need and a lot of times where we end up is where we get a request to go mm -hmm. so somebody will say okay hey this is uh this is us and we're over in west baltimore we need your guardian angels to come over such and such a time and the thing is before we get to that community we know a lot about it already because you know why we do a drive-through we find out who the players are we find out who the police commanders are we make sure we know where what we're getting into before we even get there mm -hmm. 
So we, our patrol routes are already planned and squared away. So we know, okay, I'm going here, here, here. Not only that, we have a guardian angel that, that's, that's not even with us that we call and say, okay, this is Strider. We're at such and such a time. This is what time it is. They know they have a certain amount of time to hear from us again. If they don't, they're going to make a phone call. You know, so we do a lot of stuff to cover our, ba- our backs and our bases. But, you know, a lot of where we go is pretty much, you know, chosen because of who calls us and who requests us. We can literally go out seven days a week and our calendar is pretty much full. Hey, you know, and we do events and meetings and all that kind of stuff, but patrols and stuff like all that stuff is planned by us and it's for our safety. You know, so we pretty much know where we're going and what we're going to do. All right, I'm going to give you five minutes of your play time because it take me five minutes to do a commercial. So I'm giving you five minutes to throw out, uh, well, I know you have a, a website, anything to promote the Guardian Angels. They're so nice, right? So <laughs> we, are the, we are the Guardian Angels, the Alliance of Guardian Angels. My particular chapter is in Baltimore. And, uh, you know, we, to get in touch with us, you can get in touch with us at our website at, Balti- at www.baltimoreguardianangels.org. Or you can get in touch with our one of our commanders, Jazz, at 410-777-3731, and she will answer all your questions. We do take donations. We do take, we're looking for guardian angels, so if you're in the Baltimore area, don't say Baltimore City alone because I have a car. I can drive anywhere. You can drive to guardian angels. We're looking for great people to volunteer for. Even if you just want information, come see us. And this Saturday, the 18th, we're having our 12-year Guardian Angel anniversary in Baltimore at 1805 Wicks Avenue at our Guardian Angel headquarters at 1 p.m., and we love for you to be there. you got to show up because we're going to have Curtis Sliwa. We're going to have Guy Tom Bordish and Peas in their pods. We're going to have, have food. We're going to have food. We're going to have 20-year uh, veteran of the New York Police Department, Ed Norris, and former Baltimore City Police Commissioner, Ed Norris is going to be speaking there. It's going to be a good time. If you want to send a donation, get in touch with Jazz. 410-777-3731. Um, and, and I will put up tonight, y'all, the um, numbers and the websites on my page. But also, we just wanted to give a shout-out really important. That um, <laughs> Curtis has so many unbelievable recommendations. Like, I couldn't even get a recommendation from my teacher if we go to college. Curtis uh, is the founder. My name's Strider. <laughs> Strider, I'm sorry. She I'm just sorry. moved me up the food <laughs> chain. I'm, I'm in sorry. charge I'm now. <laughs> But um, I was like just amazed. I mean, like the, the work that y'all do and the people that are behind you is, is, is unbelievable. So, you know, they do great work and I would suggest it, especially the people that I talked to that didn't know who the Guardian Waves. Uh-huh. I was like, did you ever watch the And 80s? where are they from? Like Alabama. Was okay. Like, didn't you watch like, you know, <laughs> Starskin Hutch or anything like that? But um, in saying that, I just covered up my commercial. Um, I want to say, are, are, have you told me everything? Have you told me everything? Because you got two more minutes. No, well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to let you go ahead and do your okay. commercial. All right. Uh, no, you need to talk a little bit more. Okay, until well, I find this you know what? Go <laughs> to. Go, you want to find out about the Guardian Angels? Go to the. We have a, a website, guardianangels.org, and you can find out any Guardian Angel in your state. And uh, you can read, you can find me on Facebook, Marcus Strider Dent. You can see all that. You've got our local website. The Guardian Angels are pretty much everywhere, every country, every state. We, we, it's a great organization. We're looking for good people. We're looking for sponsors. We're looking for events. And if you can, if you're coming through Baltimore on Saturday, we'd love to see you. And you got to come in here and say, hey, we found you on Lauren's show. Yeah, I get so, a plug. Do I ever get a plug? Nobody ever plugs me. I, I just did that. Oh, you did. I, so, so, I, know, so yeah, like, you I would know. go speak at y'all's place. Easily. Well, okay, so now, okay. You oh, just, you, God. This is on video. <laughs> she just said that. So now we have to have a field trip for Lauren to come to Baltimore and actually do her show in Baltimore at Guardian Angel headquarters. Now, yeah. how cool is that? Now, if you're watching here live, I want you to post and say, Lauren, go to Baltimore. That's our campaign. Lauren and, goes to Baltimore. What well, do you yeah, think? And, you know, I have a bunch of family over there. Do you really? Yeah, well, my aunt was the Chief Justice Supreme Court in uh, Virginia, uh, and then my uh, cousin is a DA over there. Really? Mm-hmm. See, so so Lauren, go to Baltimore. So go to my Facebook page, go to her Facebook page, and just say, Lauren, go to Baltimore. Okay. Y'all pay me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke, because we were talking about sponsors. Uh, no, 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 sponsors. make it happen. We need it. There um, you go. All right, guys, I am going to thank my sponsor, Joseph Tortorici, Slacey and Tortorici Law Firm, which I love. Um, look, they're buzzing me right now, um, which I love. I love this law firm because it's small and it's uh, 
really socialized to trademarking, actresses, models, um, you know, any kind of patent things you need, contracts. It's a small boutique kind of a law firm. So when you call them, like in the middle of the night, like just the other day, I got a phone call that somebody is taking my identity and put it up and is selling pictures off of me. I immediately called him. He immediately picked up, and he's on top of it. So it's a wonderful, I mean, you know, it's a wonderful law firm. They do have offices here in Alabama and in Los Angeles, and their phone number is 205-978-4211. And you can reach them at info at themillennialawyer.com. That's a website that they have going on. All right, and I consider them kind of the millennial lawyers, but they're wonderful lawyers. I love them, and you know, even every, every day they check in on me, even on Sunday. One of them calls just to say, are you, are you doing good? And I know they have a ton of clients. So that's Cosmopolitans with Lauren for today, and I think I put on my very serious face today, didn't I? No joking like the other day. No, it was pretty good. You did it pretty good. It was pretty, pretty good. It was damn good. I thought you were very serious. Thank and you. it was a very serious topic and Usually a great guest. A great guest. So oh, stay tuned on Village Connection Network for the two plumbers, followed by Monty and the Pharaoh. This is Cosmopolitans with Lauren, and we are out. I'm